here. Um, and I, I'm sorry we're against Lansing because I do believe Maze and Blue, but I will tell you, uh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But I'll tell you that in, in, down there in Florida, I cheer for anybody in the Big Ten. I, I know it's a good body, but I didn't cheer for Ohio State once in a while down there because the Big Ten, I'm so tired of the SEC. I am so tired of the SEC, but we're here. We're here in Michigan. It's a real privilege, man, for me to speak. And I'm speaking on deep change. And it's a, it's a subject that's uh, very dear to my heart. When Demetrius asked if I would speak on deep change, I said, I would love to speak on deep change. Um, he said, you have 20 minutes. I said, hey, what? I'm going to speak on deep change in a shallow way? Well, that's what we're going to do here today. <laughs> We're going to talk about deep change, and I would suggest to you, as soon as the PowerPoint comes up, that um, the passage that we talked about today, that was on the program, is when Jesus, in John 21, is talking to his disciples, and he says, throw your nets on the right side of the boat. Can you imagine how crazy that sounded to these fishermen who spent their entire lives fishing? They know fishing. And then all of a sudden, this guy, who they don't know is Jesus, by the way, this time, says to them, hey, throw your nets on the other side. They are so audacious, and those guys are thinking, who is this guy who's telling us how to fish? Experienced fishermen. But they did, and he all the results. And that's when Peter jumps out of the boat because he realizes this is the Christ. You know, Jesus is still doing that to experienced leaders today. He tells them things just as stupid as throw the nets and those on the boat. The leaders say, I know what I'm doing here, and I've been doing it for years. But I would suggest that Jesus really, really wants us to be involved in deep change. And I will try to give you the next 20 minutes that deep change is something that few of us, few of us are experienced. But that effective ministry, literally, no matter whether you're a lay or a pastor, effective ministry, in a changing world requires you to change deep. Not just once or twice, but in fact throughout your lifetime. I remember a year, again, in Michigan 40 years ago at a state meeting. I remember watching a young guy stand up and speak and think, man, that guy, he's good. I can never speak like he man. This guy's really, really good. And I followed him over the next 10 years. And uh, he's out of ministry today. And I can honestly say, looking back at these last 40 years of ministry, uh, without any doubt, that those people who have been the most effective and productive long-term in ministry are those who committed 